Hi friends! So, I'm coming to you with another fountain pen video. Surprise! Shock! Um, this is the corollary, if you will, to the 10 pens I would not repurchase um, if I was starting my collection all over again. These are the 10 pens I would repurchase if I was starting my collection all over again. So, these are not really in any particular order, and I set some ground rules for myself. I decided I could only show one pen per maker. So, there is potentially an honorable mention um, that I'll include at the end because, well, anyway. So, Without further ado, what are the 10 pens that, if I had to start all over again, I would repurchase? Um, this is the order I wrote them down in, so this is probably the order they occurred to me, uh, but that doesn't mean they're ranked this way. So the first one is my Santini Italia Libra in the color Fifth Avenue. It's funny, again, I will say colors are not accurate. This is far more green in person. I love the color it appears there, just bluer, but it is a gorgeous pen. It has a medium nib, but it's a pretty wet writer and it's fairly flexible. They make their own nibs and uh, sometimes I just go look at their website because I dream of owning another one, but they're not, um, they're not low in cost. <laughs> But I adore this pen. Um, just beautiful. It fits well in my hand. The cap, look at that. Look at how deeply that posts. Um, it could even fit on other fingers. Uh, <laughs> it does post on the back of this, actually. If that's your jam, it will fit. I think it's too heavy. but Anyway, I, I just... Ugh. I love it. I love it so much. I mean, I love all of these, so you're going to hear a lot of me going like, oh my god, I love this pen. So the first one there that we're talking about, my Santini Italia Libra. And then, this is sort of the like, I should have bought this sooner. <sighs> the Lamy 2000. It's so understated. This pen is like an adult. You know? A lot of my pins are like pins for kids. I mean, not really, but you know what I mean? Like, this is just classy. It. Oh, satisfying. Somebody asked if my cap, if this wiggles, by the way, side to side, not really. Up and down, yes, but I think that's um, expected. Anyway, I love this pen. I got this with a medium nib, which is funny because I'm like such a broad nib person. But um, I got this with medium because everybody's like, oh, they write so broad. <clears throat> I love it. Love it, love it. I especially love to put like bright pink ink in it or just really sort of unexpected colors. And then... We have my Peyton Street Pins Ranga uh, collab, the Miwok 2. <laughs> Funnily enough, I got this with a medium nib, but I've since switched it for a broad. This is an Ebonite pin, and um, I had heard lots of things about Ebonite, and I was like, you know what, I really want to try Ebonite. And this is a really inexpensive way, I think, to try an Ebonite pin, unless I think you could maybe get a more expensive way if you bought direct from India, but I don't really want to do that. Um, these pins can be eyedroppered, but per my earlier conversations about I don't like having that much ink capacity, I am not going to eyedropper it. So I use the converter. I think this pen, it would be best if I did not remove that converter very often. So going forward, I think I'm going to sh shy away from using super saturated inks in it because those, to clean them really well, I feel like I want to get that converter out and clean. Or I just deal with contamination, so to speak. And I like, this pen smells like tires. Everybody's like, ooh, Ebonite has such a 
unusual smell. It's tires. So maybe not all of them smell like bike tires, but this one does. Let's watch it roll because there's no roll stop. I'm pretty sure you can get a roll stop added, but I didn't want one. There, just stay. Next pen is a Twisby, and this is my VAC 700R Iris with a broad nib. Because this answers the question if I can only own one Twisby, right? Because this is what would I repurchase? This is the Twisby I picked. Um, it just writes so well. This is a, it's, I mean, maybe it's telling because this is a set, this is like a number six nib versus the others, which I think are four or five. Um, this handles pretty dry inks like the chromo shaders. It handles shimmer really well. You can take it apart and clean it out. Love it. Love it. So, Vac 700R. And of course, yes, I would also get the iris version of it because, I mean, there's a part of me that wants like 10 of them. I would, no. The next one. Whoa, 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 whoa. The last pins, none of them have roll stops, <laughs> clips. <laughs> they just all started taking off. Spoilers. Is a platinum preppy. So I got, I have two of these now because one I got for free for Black Friday. These pins are so great. Like, they write so much better than they have, oh, there's blue in there, than they have any reason to. So I got this as a throwaway pin or a pin that I didn't care if it got stained and I could put an ink in it that is a, a troublemaker. And this stays at my on my work desk and so there's always a pen there for me to use that is a fountain pen in case like my daily writer is you know not at my desk and I actually think if I was getting someone into pens and I wanted to get them a pen this is probably this would be my choice I know that's not what this video is about but here's my reasoning it's low hassle. You can just put cartridges in it and it's like plug and play. You just like and start writing. And for people who are new to pins, that's perfect. They don't need or want necessarily a huge ink capacity. They don't want to mess around with converters and eyedropper conversions and all of these things, right? They just are used to pins that they pick up and write and this will do that. And it's a really good tip. I got mine in 05, which is their medium. Um, and just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So I would rebuy one of these because it's also great for the inks that you uh, don't want to put in other pens. Then the last ones are all pens by small makers. One of them looks like it might have scratches on it. Well, I'm just not going to look closely at that, okay? We'll just be sad. So, this is my woodshed pen. The only... I say I would repurchase it, but I can't because he's not making pens anymore. This is a hand-turned acrylic. This is the Jonathan Brooks, Brooks Carolina... I almost said Carolina Homespun, which, y'all, is a yarn thing. Carolina Pen Company, uh, Mermaid Tears... I love it so much. This pen is, it's perfect for me. I like it's like smaller size. I like that it's flat top. I think you'll notice that almost all of these pens have flat tops and bottoms. I prefer that aesthetically. Um, functionally, it doesn't matter, but aesthetically, I like it. Um, I adore this pen. I look forward to writing with it. Now... We're going to need another roll stop. Um, next up, my Carolina Pen Company pen in Mermaid Tears. <laughs> I was at his table and I was gnawing mm, over the, like, which pen should I get? And I was looking at all the different ones he had and I was so torn between a couple and I just was like this one I kept coming back to it and I thought but you have other pens like it a little bit 
And then when he told me the name of the material, I was like, welp, that's funny because I have another pen that's in this material. This one's matte. It writes really nicely. I adore it. I also really look forward to writing with this. Then we have my Franklin Christoph Model 46 in the um, blue diamond cast. Gorgeous pen. Um, I will, in the wintertime, I have a, all year long, I have a gas fireplace. In the wintertime, I use it. And I'll sit in front of it sometimes. I don't use it for long, but I'll sit in front of it and, hey, there's water here. And right, and this pen is gorgeous in the firelight. Just stunning. Stunning. And it writes really nicely. Um, I like supporting smaller makers. Beautiful pen. Then, no spoilers. Penultimate pen. <laughs> Was it? I think it's just fingerprints, maybe. Sorry. Sorry. This is my latest Walltown pens purchase. This is the Watts. The peacock plume color. Amanda made me do it. And I have no rag rats about that. It is so beautiful. I adore it. I ordered some nail polish that I think is going to coordinate with it. Um, yeah. Size 6 broad nib. This one's inked up. I'm not going to show you. They all write. They all write what really well. Um, but this one writes well and is just so beautiful. And last but certainly not least is my pen from Newton Pens. This is the Majestic model and the material is called Orion. I can't remember who made it or makes it. Uh, this has a medium nib on it and this was, I think, the first pen I got where I had to email the person who made the pen in order to buy it. And that was a really nice experience that I'm glad I got. Because as somebody who also makes things, it's really wonderful to talk to a maker um, and express how joyful you are over the thing that they pour themselves into. There we go. So, Twisby, why are you upside down? These are the 10 pins that I would repurchase. Now, I feel like there is a glaring omission here because we know that this is a thing. So my honorable mention goes to the Twisby Eco with a broad nib because those pens are so, so great for shimmer inks. So great. The only, I will say the ones that I've been using as like, um, I'm a little worried this ink might ruin this pen is the Twisby Go because it's a lower cost if it does get ruined but they're just champs and they're so easy to clean so that's my honorable mention yeah there's a thing right here it might be stickiness okay turn it over then it doesn't exist perfect so here's my 10 pens that I would definitely repurchase and here's a good lineup in case you are wanting size comparisons of any of these pens. Um, interestingly, they run the gamut, I think, of sizes. There are none of them. This one, the Majestic, is surprisingly maybe the longest. Next to the back 700. 
And my beloved woodshed is this short squat one. How, how cute. I just was playing a game where I had to organize things. Um, little to the left. Game of the year. <laughs> Maybe not, but I certainly played it until like 2 o'clock in the morning. So it's got that going for it. And um, now I'm just like, mm, mm, let's put these in size order. Also, I don't know if you noticed that like most of these are blue. <laughs> most of these pens are some shade of blue. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I know what I like. And what I like is blue. And that is okay. Now, do we have them in size order? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's that's pleasing. That's pleasing. Wait, no. You're taller. Why are you there? You're a tall one. Are you taller than that one? Maybe. It's tough to say. Mm, they're after me. I better stop this video now. Thank you for hanging out with me. Which of these pins is your favorite? Would any of these pins make your I would repurchase this list? I will say I found it interesting because this pin... The Lamy 2000 made it to Chris Sainz's um, pins I would not repurchase list. And her reasons for that are really great. She feels like it's expensive, so she doesn't want to, like, take it everywhere and chuck it around and risk it getting damaged or lost. And that makes so much sense. So, But it's on my list because, whatever, I love it. <laughs> this is how I judge things. It's pretty. Um, so let me know below what you think of this. Did I do all right on size? Organization. No, I think this has to go like this. And now, ding, ding, I won the level. All right. I hope you're having a wonderful day whenever you're watching this. Take care of yourself. Bye.